Hey, good day, guys. Welcome to today's live. Today we will have with us Miss Novelette Simone, who will be coming to share her teaching experience here in the United States, as well as she's going to be sharing with you how she can help you to get that teaching job in the United States. If you know somebody who's interested in getting a teaching job in the United States, they might not know how and they need help. Well, this live is for you as she will be sharing as well how she can help you to achieve that goal. Now, you know, guys, I'm going to be bringing you the tea because it's here for all of us. It's here for all of us. And so each one help one. Go ahead and share the link with somebody who might be interested. Don't forget also, if you've not subscribed to this channel as yet, go ahead and subscribe and turn your notification bells on. And to get things out the way, go ahead and like this video as soon as you jump on and let us know where you're watching from. Can you put in the comment section, where are you watching from? We're gonna give the others a few minutes to join and we're going to get straight into it. But I like to know where the viewers are watching from. And then and then later down in the year, you're going to be messaging me and say, hey, remember that live? I'm now here in the United States. Go ahead and put in the comment section where you're watching from, guys. And we're going to give the others, Yala, St. Thomas, Jamaica, Cameroon, Italy, Texas, wow, North Carolina. I see you on IG shouting those places where you're watching from. Thanks for sharing, guys. Still waiting for the comments on YouTube and Facebook, guys, wherever you're watching from. Go ahead and put it in the comment section so we know where you are. Samuel from Ghana. Welcome, Samuel. That's a new name. Not sure if it's the first year joining our live, but welcome, welcome, Samuel. Welcome, guys. We're on IG or Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube. Thanks for joining. Um, we're going to get straight into it because we do not want to delay. Marlene, Jamaican teacher here, currently in North Carolina. Hey, Marlene. Tosina is in Nigeria. And Weston is in Zambia. So we have people from all different countries watching us this evening. That's so awesome. Now, Emma from Ghana. Now, one last thing before I begin. Go ahead and share this link with somebody who may need the information on how they can, you know, get a teaching job in the United States, as well as learn from Miss Simone first and experience how teaching in the United States is going for her. Brenda Lee from Jamaica and Marcella from Portmore, Jamaica. Guys, thanks for joining. We're gonna go straight into it. Now, our guest today is Miss Novelette Simone and she has been an educator for over 30 years. She's married and has two sons and a grandson. She's a Christian. And she's the owner of the nonprofit organization called Woman Inspiring Transformation. She's the CEO of Step by Step Consultancy, which is an LLC, and, and it's also a teacher recruiting agency. She's the co owner of a cleaning agency as well as a transportation company. So, guys, she's doing big things. She has a master's degree in literacy and has been a literacy coach for the past three years. Did I mention she's from Jamaica? I must add this in. She is from Jamaica. Latoya from South Carolina. We have Nana in Ghana. All right. And she is a visa consultant and is in the process of becoming an emotional coach. Miss Simone's educational philosophy is every child can learn, just not on the same day or in the same way. Her personal philosophy is action is the foundational key to all success. 
And to cap it all off, Miss Simone states that she is a prayer warrior and a devil chaser, and she can do all things through Christ who strengthens her. Guys, help me welcome Miss Simone to our live this evening. Shout out to Nakisha from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Brissett from British Virgin Islands. Guys, thanks for joining. Welcome, Miss Simone. Thanks for coming to share with us this evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so Miss Simone, we're gonna go straight into it and we're gonna start by talking about you, your um, inspiration. What inspired you to enter in the teaching profession? Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, in Back in Jamaica, I, as a Christian, I usually go to church. And so at the church, they would, I would teach Sunday school. Teaching Sunday school, my Sunday school um, superintendent realized that, well, oh, this girl is a very good teacher. And so they had this, uh, they had this school at the church. And so she invited me to come and um, do, I used to play netball, good netball player. Okay. So they invited me to come and be the netball coach. Being the netball coach, then, you, you know, they would call you and say, all right, stay in this classroom until the teacher get back or, you know. And just by being in the different classrooms, they realized, no, man, but she can manage. She good man. Yeah. And so she motivated me to go to college. And hence, I went to Teachers College, one of the best in Jamaica. Yeah. St. Um, Joseph's. St. <laughs> <Saint> Joseph's. <laughs> I went to St. Saint 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 Joseph's, Joseph's Teachers, Teachers College. college. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And so from there, <laughs> I went to Western Carolina University and then to ACE to do my uh, master's degree in literacy. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So you've taught, you say, over 30 years. So I'm assuming some of those years, um, you did them in Jamaica. What motivated yes, you to... Yes. What motivated you to want to teach abroad and specifically the United States? Girl, you know Jamaica, how it is tough. <laughs> I was at one of the best, again, the best primary school in Jamaica, which is the St. Richard's Primary School. At the St. Wow. Richard's Primary School, yeah. At the St. Richard's Primary School, yes, you can make money, um, especially doing tutoring. However, all of that money just could not add up to pay the bills. It was tough. And so, and and I would consider myself to live a comfortable, you know, kind of life, but it was still not adding up. Uh, and so based on having some friends here who encouraged me to, you know, get on one of these programs, I did. Okay. All right. Good. So. The next question, which we know everybody's going to want to know, what route did you take to get here and specifically on what program? Well, I came here on uh, Teachers Council. That's the program I came on, which is a program, as we always say, you have the free programs and things like that. So I never came on one of those free programs. I came on the one that I had to pay. So I came here through Teachers Council. Okay. Okay. So was it a hard transition from Jamaica to Teachers Council, knowing that, and I say this because a lot of Jamaican teachers may, I know Jamaican teachers are on Teachers Council, but I know a lot of them are more privy to the ones that are free. And when, when, when you hear me say the ones that are free, then you should, um, you know, take some note from it that teachers council may not be. What was the transition like? How difficult was it for you to get on that program? Ah, well, that program is not one that is difficult to get on because again, you have to pay. So that make it much easier for you to 
get through. Once they look at your qualifications, your resume, and they believe that you're qualified, you have the two years experience. And by the way, teacher, I came as a J1, not on a H1B. So I came to exchange program. That's what I came on. So once you can find the money, and they're going to check some uh, background thing to make sure that you are able to, uh, you have to give them some, I'm sorry, something regarding your account to make sure that you have enough money to cover whatever, uh, I think it's up to three months here in the United States, uh, saying that you're not working. You're able to pay your rent, pay the bills and so on, plus their fee. You must be able to pay their fee. And then yearly, after you pay a certain amount of money, yearly you also have to pay some money. So it, it, it cost us a lot, I must say. It did. So you, you're saying you had to show like bank statements that you can cover three years living in the United States. No, and no, then three every, months. Oh, three months. Three months. And then uh -huh. every year, and then every year after that, you have to pay them to continue on their program. Yes. Okay. Well, we're glad that you're here sharing this with us because I know a lot of the teachers who have been on this platform and been on the J1 program, they're usually on the programs that are free and they don't need to pay any money up front. So this is definitely something that's enlightening and people can learn from that there's also J1 program sponsors that you can um, go through, but you have to pay your money up front. And as Ms. Simone says, it was easier for her to get on that program because, you know, you have to pay your money. So your, your pocket basically needs to be tall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. All yes, right. Man. So when you decided to take this leap of faith, what were your expectations coming to teach in the United States? Uh because I wanted to be here so badly, it somewhat, uh, and because of I have friends who would tell me what they have been through, mentally mm -hmm. prepared mentally um, to take that leap of faith. Um, however, it doesn't matter how prepared you think you are, um, getting into the system is a total different um, experience. So mentally I was yeah. prepared, but after a while, when I got here, then it was something totally different. Do you All want right. me to go into what were the differences? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to ask you, can you describe those experiences and those um, differences that, you know, even though you conditioned your mind for it, it was different actually being in the system? You can explain well, some more. No, well, number one, these children are totally different from us, our kids back home in the classroom. Yeah. Um, you can't discipline them the way that you'd want to discipline them back home. Therefore, you'll have, for some people, you'll have serious challenges where class control is concerned. For me, mm -hmm. when I just came, um, I tried to learn the children. And so one of the challenges that I faced was um, learning the children, adopting to their belief on how they are verbal and how they just will say anything that comes to their mouth, even though I was in, um, well, still is in primary school, as we would say, elementary school, but these kids are very verbal. One of my biggest challenge was the curriculum, the way how they teach the way how I teach, we we get the curriculum and we use it to meet the needs of our kids. However, in most of these districts or in my district, you get the curriculum they want you to eat. And they used to have this thing called perky pace that used to annoy the gut out of me, this perky pace, because it, it, that was challenging. And then having people walking into your classroom on a regular basis, somebody coming in to sit for five minutes or 10 minutes, half an hour, the entire lesson to watch you teach, that drove me crazy. And I must tell people that when I came, I ended up in the, um, um, 
what do you call that? In the emergency room, um, two times because my blood pressure went wow. sky high. So I ended up in the emergency wow. room twice when I just came in my first year because of just that. Um, after a while, I had no problem where class control is concerned because I told them I am in charge of the class. And so I started right. to instill that in them with love because you can't do it outside yes. of love. With love that right. I am in charge. And because of that, um, I have principals who talk to me about my class control, how it's very good, and you know, get a lot of praise where that is concerned. But the biggest challenge that I faced was the curriculum. After a while, though, I got used to it, mastered it, hence me not even being in a classroom anymore for over three years. Wow, wow, wow. Um, can you tell us um, what state were you placed in when you came? Uh, that's something. Well, I am in, I, I work in Louisiana, but I am, I live in Mississippi. So I cross okay. borders. I go across the Mississippi bridge to go to work. And you've been teaching in Louisiana since you've been here? Yeah. And that is uh, six years now, going on to seven wow. years. So, so so I'm curious because you say you're in one state, Mississippi, and then you're going to Louisiana. How long is that journey daily from where you are in Mississippi? I know the borders may be ah, close where you from are. From where? The plane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like 25 minutes drive to work. Hmm. That's not bad. So it's not very far. Just like 25 minutes. Uh -uh, no, 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 that's not bad. That's not, that's bad. not bad at all. Not bad at all. Mm -hmm. All right. I know you say the curriculum was your, um, might have been your lowest point, and then you got, you grasp it after a while. And you spoke also about the, the children's behavior. What were some of your high points while teaching in the, while teaching in Louisiana? Uh, the moving the children where reading is concerned. You know that reading is a challenge here. And so mm -hmm. me being able to move those children from reading at some in second grade, reading at pre-K, uh, reading at um, um, kindergarten level, level, or moving from pre-K to kinder, from kinder to, that was something else. And the first year, I did it in my first year, which... I mean, my name went abroad in the district and the high wow. praises that I got. Oh, yes. The praises I got from that, allowing the right. children to be able to read from parents to uh, different principals in the district. At the, oh, my name was out there in the district because of that. Um, so um, those are some high things for me, um, being able yes. to teach these children to read. I, I, I can't say America has been bad to me. It has been good, I must say. After that first, mm -hmm. first year of the challenges that I faced, I've been successful. Good. So um, do you mind sharing with us and the, for the viewers who are listening and people who might aspire to teach in the United States, <laughs> What were some of the classroom management strategies you used? Because after that first year where you had to, you know, be in the emergency room, I'm sure you went to the drawing book and you said, this is what I'm going to do to make sure people are staying on task and make sure I'm also keeping myself in good health. What were some of those classroom management strategies that you used? Okay, so these kids love things. <laughs> it may sound funny and weird. But girl, I spent some money. I spent some money in that first year, even up to the second year, because they love things. So I usually give them things um, if, and use behavioral charts. And if your name is not on that chart and different things like that, you get something. I would usually say to them, if while I'm working with them, if they're doing good, I'd give them a sweet. I say, kiss your brain. They love that, to take that sweet. And I give them the opportunity to eat that. That in class, they love that. Mm -hmm. They love when I I just give them things. And I can tell that help with my class. Give them break from different activities. 
like I'm going to we have this reading corner that was oh they love going into that corner so they know that once they do good once they behave they want to go over into that corner so those are some of the things but the main thing I just would give them things and I also let them know that I appreciate you I love you but so they love to hear that because we know that most of these children are coming from homes that are broken so I yes. use love I use love. I say, you know what? I love you, but I don't love the behavior. Don't do that. Mrs. Simonet, don't like that. You hurt right. my feelings when you do that. So when I start to talk to them that way, it also helps to change their thinking. Okay, good. All right. Now, I know you mentioned that your, you, you, your success made a lot of you know, things happen in your school district. Were you ever rewarded? My next question is, what was one of your greatest accomplishments? Like, uh, were you ever like the teacher of the year? Something great that you would say yes for my successes and all that I've brought these kids through. This is my greatest accomplishment since working here in the United States. I At one time, I got some money which was a good amount of money that I got um, for what I have done. And so I really appreciated that. That was the biggest thing I got. I got some money and I also got a certificate. Okay, sounds good. So do we have a lot of Jamaicans um, in Louisiana and Mississippi teaching? I know you're in Louisiana. So do we have a lot of teachers in Louisiana and Mississippi from the Caribbean or different countries teaching? Ah, uh, we don't have a whole lot, but I have brought in quite a number of them in my school district and we have some Filipinas there, but it's not a whole lot. But <clears throat> a good number might be about 20, 25 um, persons or it could be a little less than that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. you mentioned that you brought in some. Can you explain to us that process? How? What do you mean by you brought in some to your school district? Uh, well, some persons, I just invited them and because of my connection in the district. Um, I was able to set that up for them to come on, uh, um, come to the school district, as well as because of my recruiting agency that I have, they were able to come in on my program. Okay, so do you mind sharing a little more about that for people who might be interested and, you know, how it works and how they can contact you? Okay, so uh, the recruiting agency is Step by Step Consultancy. We are on Facebook. We have a Facebook group. We also, we are on um, Instagram, LinkedIn, and uh, where are we again? I think for now, and Instagram, right? Um, also, we have our website that people can go to, which is www.stepbystepconsultancy.org. And we have an email address that you can send <clears throat> your um, resume to. So we usually ask persons to submit a resume. We go through the, my team, go and I, we go through the resume. And from the resume, we look for different things. And once we believe that, in fact, because somebody being in the classroom, being here in the United States, I somewhat have an understanding what the schools are looking for. And so based on that, go through the resumes, then um, we, we would give you a call back to say, well, you have been selected and uh, the further steps that they need to take to be a part of that so guys, program. You can so reach presently, out. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. So presently, we are in communication because we never did the uh, the J1 before. But presently, we are in communication, which seems positive that we would be able to get um, J1 uh, visas for sponsorship. And that, that is looking positive. Um, but usually, it is the H visa that we do. Because as a Jamaican, I must tell you, I prefer the H visa even the H-1B, even though, you know, your spouse cannot work and things like that. But I usually prefer that because having that kind of visa can lead you into getting a green card. Okay. All right. So 
Um, before we go into the question and answer se section, because I know people are asking questions, um, tell us some more. You also said, I know you have a transportation and a cleaning company. I know there's a lot of Jamaican teachers here who would like to start their own business, but they don't know how to do this. Tell us about the cleaning and transportation and, and, and if it's something that others can maybe, you know, try for themselves as well. Okay, so I'm not going to go into 100% the details because right. um, I do have on my website where persons can um, send me a message if they want to have contact me and then we can have some okay. form of consultation there. But um, it, you know, we were on a J1 program and so you have to be very smart in what you do. And so being yes. on the J1 program, um, we were able to register these three companies because when you're on a J1, the J2s can work and you can do business. So yes. um, getting advice from my lawyer, I was able to register these companies. And then as soon as I, um, I, I got through with our green card process, then I was able to go right into it to um, be, become the CEO of, uh, of one of the company in particular, which is my brainchild, step-by-step -step consultancy. Because I want to help Jamaicans. I believe in helping Jamaicans. Okay, good. So if they need information, they need to go to your website. That's correct? Yeah, yeah go to my website and, and fill out that um, application and send me a message and I'll get the message and then we will talk, take it from there. Awesome. All right, so one last question and then we're going to take questions from the uh, viewers. If you had the opportunity to come to the United States again, what would you do differently? Uh, one of the thing I think I would do is to um, ensure that I seek out housing. I forgot what to tell you about that. Make sure that I seek housing and have something kind of set up because that also I forgot, as I said, was a little bit challenging and um so that would be a number one thing to do to make sure that i check out housing before um, i get here mm -hmm. awesome all right so we're gonna go straight into the comment section guys if you have any questions go ahead and put them in the comment section so i can ask them i know the first one i saw was um the website can you repeat that so i can just put it in the chat right there so it is um www.stepbystepconsultancy.org okay and our email let me give you the email address also mm -hmm. it's info at stepbystepconsultancy.org So what I'm getting from Miss Simone is this, for those who are here, you're J2, you are a J1 holder, you have your J2, um, whether it's your husband or your wife, they can start their own businesses because remember they yes, are yes. authorized to work once their work permit is approved mm -hmm. so they can start their own business so guys it's always wise to learn from others who are here how they did it and you can take something from their page all right so questions i know i saw a question someone was asking if Teachers Council still exists? I'm sure it's a yes. Oh. Yes, it does. Um, Dan, yes, Dan is asking, what's the salary scale like in Louisiana? Okay, in my school district, the salary, the salary is not as high as a lot of places, but uh, some people get uh, about 4,000 
4,500, but, and I think that's the but why I am still there. They, they pay bonuses, which a lot of school district don't. So on an average, um, and they pay bonus. So at the, in December 10th, you can look to get a bonus, which for some people is up to $6,000 for the bonus. Yes, ma'am. In May coming, the 10th of May, you can look to get a bonus again which may scale down a little bit between 5,000, 4,000 something dollars. But that is what is the catch for most people. You can look forward to that. They also have tutoring that you can do. And I think, yeah, they pay $40 per hour. So, I mean, there are a whole lot of little things that helps to make up with the, the salary. Mm -hmm. So these bonuses, you say two bonuses, one in May, one in December. What it has to, what what is it for? Is it has to do with your performance? They just give everybody that works in the district a bonus. Yes, ma'am, and it has to do with the taxes. I don't remember what they call it. Some tax cap, some tax something. I don't remember the name of it right now, but it has to okay. do with the amount of taxes that is collected in the district. And that overflow is given to the uh, the teachers. To the teachers. So, so I staff. know she's not. Somebody is asking what grades you teach. Well, I taught uh, second grade. Then I had moved to the high school to teach um, reading at the high school level, and then I'm back at the um, uh, at the at the elementary school now as a literacy coach. So I was a literacy coach at the high school. Now I'm at the elementary school I'm, and I'm a literacy school, um, coach. I've not been your, into your the classroom internet, teaching for over three years. Your internet keep going in and out. But I, I heard what you said. You first, you were yeah. teaching, you say second grade, then you, then you went to the high school to teach reading then literacy coach and then back to the elementary school as a literacy coach. Okay. Um, yes. Somebody says, do teachers have to pay for sponsorship? Tanya, can you be, uh, um, on my <laughs> can you be clear what your, um, please, is your, with my program? Oh, someone is, I guess that's what she's asking about. Yes. I am assuming Tanya, can you clarify? Um, if it's my program she's speaking of, yes, for now. But we are trying our best to get school. And so I'm communicating with school districts now that will sponsor the teachers and pay for them so that the teachers don't have to pay out of pocket to come on the program. So we are in that process presently working on that to get some contracts and so that's what I'm working on now. But if not, if we don't get the contracts, persons will have to pay out of pocket. Okay. Like teachers council. Just like teachers council. But, but we will not be as expensive as teachers council. Okay. I will not be. And also the services that we offer. Remember I told you about housing? So based on that, what we have done, a part of the offer to persons who um, come on our program is to um, seek out housing for them before they get here. So we try our best to seek out housing for them before they get here, along with a lot of other different services that we offer. Okay. Um, Dan is asking, what's the teacher turnover rate like in your school? Oh, the teacher turnover rate, it's, I would say, high-ish. High <laughs> and let me tell you why. Because, how do I put this? When you have Americans working into a school system, remember, they will just, if you upset them, they'll just get up and leave. Yes. They, 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 it doesn't matter to them. They take their bags and they go. 
And they are not like us. And that is why people, come on, let me talk to you now. That is why they are begging us to come. And they want us some. Because we are committed, we are dedicated. And when they see us, how we teach our preparations, they are shocked. And I want to warn you too, for those who you're not here yet, but you might be listening, expect jealousy because they don't want to do the work like what we are doing. But yes. at the same time, but at the same time, they see you doing it. They are jealous. So you have to prepare yourselves for all of that. But yeah, we do have it because especially the American teachers. Mm -hmm. Guys, I'm going to take a quick short pause, a quick short pause so I can, and myself and Miss um, Simone can take a sip of our water and I'm com coming back to the questions. I definitely know my next question is from Samuel. But guys, if you did not like this video as yet, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and don't forget to share it. So one quick 30 second break. I need you to go ahead and like the video and also share with somebody who might be interested. All right, so we're back, and I'm sure that gave you some time to like the video and share. Our next question was from Samuel, who was asking, and I see, I see Danny saying that we have to bribe the kids. <laughs> um, Samuel was asking, let me find it back. I know that was a question that was next. Is your consultancy only for Jamaicans? uh the first group that we did was from jamaica now we have a lot of applications from the philippines so it's not really just from jamaica but um we're just branching off into getting some persons from the philippines so we do have it's not just jamaica i think samuel is in ghana if i'm not samuel did say earlier where he's um joining from um Marcella is asking, do international teachers need to have their teacher licensure? Um, no. Coming into the district that I have placed teachers, no. After you get here, then um, you can get you will get your license. Uh Brissett, or Brissett is asking, how long does the teachers council permit you to stay on the J1 visa? Um, so you do the three years just like all the other programs. You do the three years and then you'll be um, get the extension. And then after the extension, you get another two years. So it's five years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Marcella says she likes your glasses. Um, <laughs> do you have teachers from other Caribbean countries? Nikisha's accent. Not now. No, we don't have anybody yet from another country. Um, but okay. we have Jamaicans, we have Jamaicans who are in I mean, all right. I'm late here. Blessings to okay. Hey Donna, how can those of us who do not have a bachelor of education but a bachelor's in business qualify? Um I, I'm not sure. It's usually um, education that we deal with. So uh, I'm not sure if schools, you can still, I don't say, I'm not going to say don't send your application in. You can still send the application in and then I'll put it out there. That's what we do. Once you send your application in, once you have at least two years of teaching experience, and you send your application in, we will send it and put it out there. Because we have okay. a that really go hard. 
as they would say, to find placement for our teachers, especially this school year. Alicia McIntosh is asking, how many years of experience do we need to apply? I know you just said two years, so I guess, yeah. Yeah, two years of teaching experience. And Larry's asking a similar question, if you help other countries other than Jamaicans. Once they send the application in and they have their first degree, we will. All right, Dan is asking, what's the cost like for a teacher to come on your recruiting program? Um, I, I don't want to say that publicly right now. It's best for persons to, did I never gave the contact number for the company, but I'll give it to you after. Um, persons can call or they can go to our, because uh, we have rebranded our company um, this year also. And so based on that, our fees, because as I have said, uh, well, let me say this. We were just charging like a $2,000. That's what we were charging. Um, but we, and that covers other services. But I am trying, we are trying to not have to let anybody pay. Um, we want the school districts to sponsor them, so to get some contracts, as I've said before, from school districts. But um, compared to what I have paid um, when I came, and that $2,000, if you even have six children in your family, it's just $2,000. But you know you'd have to pay for everything else. So that's just the company fee that we had um, charged last year. We had also what is called a payment plan. But as you know, just like when you go courts, let me talk in real Jamaica and Patwa. You know, so just like when you go courts and you take out something on higher purchase, what is going to happen if you take it out on higher purchase? I know, some of them some courts yet, some of know. <laughs> Girl, I did. <laughs> girl, I did. I did. I did. <laughs> I did, girl. So you know that if it was one thousand dollar for it, by the time you finish pay for it and higher price, you pay double. You pay more. You pay more. Or triple <laughs> the amount it is originally for. So you pay more. So we do have a payment mm -hmm. plan, but it is yes. going to work out. In the long run, more expensive to be more. You. Yes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Latoya, Latoya is asking which district you get teachers in. Well, right now it's just in Louisiana, but we are branching out. I am in um, communication with many other school districts um, in uh, in South Carolina, in Mississippi. Uh, in Florida, different states. I'm, I'm in contact with some persons in different states right now. And that is why I'm saying that I'm trying to get contracts from these people that they will sign to say that, okay, we will pay the company um, to take these teachers and not you pay out of your pocket. But again, if we cannot get these contracts, get the schools to say we will pay for them, apart from the sponsorship fee, then you're going to have to pay out of your pocket. Okay. Just like what I did. But I had a vision and I had a long run plan. And so look at me now. That's what I'm saying. I did pay teachers council now. Come on now. I did pay them. But right. look at the result. Look at the right. result. You know? Yeah. Roger is asking if people from Guyana can apply. Yes. All right. You can apply. Um, Go right ahead and apply. As you know, some teachers in Jamaica would have had their diploma and then return for their bachelor's. Is there a wait time once this update is done? What do you mean? When you say go back to Jamaica for the... No, she says some teachers do their diploma and then they have to do their bachelor's degree 
is there a wait time once this update is done? I'm not sure. Maybe you want to clarify, Marcella. Stacy is asking, what about teachers who are already here in the United mm -hmm. States? Do you work mm -hmm. with those teachers? We do. I do. I have um, placed teachers here also that they were in uh, South Carolina and they wanted better opportunities and they are here in my district now. Yes, we do. Okay. All right. So what about a teacher with a diploma in education, 14 years of experience, currently studying a master's of arts in education? I'm not sure what about that teacher, uh, Ariel? What about, I'm not sure what you're asking. What proof should be provided to show that you have yeah, that's good. teaching experience? I mean, what proof? That's okay. With the diploma and the master's of arts in education. Okay. Yeah. And how do they have your diploma? How do they prove their two years of teaching experience? Uh, so we do background checks. So if you send us a resume, uh, we are going to do some follow-up, some background checks. We're going to make some calls. And so if you say you taught at this school or that, try to reach out to the schools to make sure. Because you see... Um, we don't want anything when it comes down to our company. We want to make sure that everything is as in Jamaica would say, copper setting. <laughs> it's what I'm saying. So we have to do background checks. So once you send our resume, and it may take us some time to look at the resume and then to get back to you because we must do some background checks. And that's one other thing that we use to sell our company, the services that we offer and letting school district know that we do background background checks and you're getting qualified hard-working talented teacher so we do background checks to find out okay um ariel i think i did this one already when do teachers normally start departing the u.s for from jamaica for the new school year okay so it all depends because some districts are very late. Right now, I'm dealing with some districts that they don't even decide how many teachers they need as yet, <laughs> to be honest. So school, most schools close in May. And so some people are waiting until, and can I whisper and tell you something? Why I'm, I'm not even getting upset with these school districts because let me whisper and tell you. There are persons, in my, say, for example, my district, persons who may know that they're not coming back. And even though in March, they send out that to say, um, check if you're coming back or not. Because of that bonus that they pay, <laughs> some people know that they're not coming back. But guess what? They're the telling them that they're not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> they're not telling them. So, I mean, they have to wait until May. When school actually close and everything finish away with all the money paid over, then they, they may know that this person is not coming back. That person is not coming back. So um, really and truly, it, it takes time. The process sometimes is very long with the school districts. And don't mm -hmm. decide they are very, very slow. I can tell you. Very slow. Right. Uh, where do we send our CV, guys? I did leave the email address. It's in the chat. Just look in the chat section for the email address, for the web address. And she is going to share the phone number shortly. Um, okay, that's not a question. Once you have a degree, you can apply. Thank you, Diane. Let me put that up. Once you have a degree, you can apply. All right, I think that's the last question, guys. So, guys, what we want to leave with today is that Miss Novlet Simonet, I, I was saying Simonet because I thought it was like, you know, French or something. Miss Simonet, I'm going to say, I'm going to continue saying Simonet. Miss Simonet. <laughs> Simonet. You said you take teachers with diploma. I didn't think, I don't think she said that. Uh -uh, no, I, I can't because the schools here are not going to take you with a diploma. Right. I would so love what to. I want. Go ahead, Miss Simone. Can I say something? <clears throat> yes. 
the next the next vision that I have is to see if those teachers who have just their diploma, if I can get them to come here, I don't know how it will work, but that is something in the pipeline. Get them to come here as a, a co-teacher or as they would say, a paraprofessional. So I have that in mind, but for now it's no. Oh, so now I understand what Marcella was saying. She's saying you have nine years experience on your diploma. That's enough teaching experience. I know they usually say two years after your bachelor's degree, but you have your nine years to show that you've been teaching. So it's usually sufficient. What is your take on that, Miss Simone? If they have that nine years on their, uh, on their what, the bachelor's? While they were with their diploma, they did, they taught for nine years. Then oh. they got their bachelor's after, but they don't have two full years after their bachelor's. Oh, fine. That's fine with me. But um, the schools, remember now, when we get these resumes and we send them to the schools, they are also going to check to see, if, um, okay, these persons have two years on their um, degree because most of the schools <clears throat> love for you to have at least two years on your degree. Okay. So, um, yeah, but I mean, there are schools that will take you if you just All right, have guys, that, um, my degree. only thing is if you have more further questions, go ahead and send an email with all your questions, call in, um, check out the website. Um, and I'm sure Miss Simone will respond. What, what I'm taking away from this live, and I'm not sure about you, but you can put in the comment section what you're taking away, is that Miss Simone came here from Jamaica on a J-1 visa, and she's doing awesome things. She started while her husband was on a J-2 visa. They started three companies. They registered three companies and they're doing great things so guys when you get the opportunity this is my takeaway i don't know what's yours put it in the comment section when you get the opportunity you can use it wisely a lot of people came to the united states before us a lot will come after us and we don't need to create the wheel we just need to try our best to see what works for us and our family that's my takeaway i'm proud of miss simone very good Thank Congratulations. You. I wish you, you all the best in Thank your you. future endeavors. Do you have any last words before we go? Yes, ma'am. I just want to encourage us as Jamaicans our best. Don't listen to the noises. Don't listen to it. Because if I had followed some people, I would not come because of the negatives. Oh, don't go to America to teach. Your children are this. Oh, yes, they are. But you have to think about what can I do? How will I make it work? And that's what I did. I did not listen to the noise. I came, I had a plan, and I trusted God. So even right now, in university, and my son started university, while I was on a J1 program. So that's another story. So I'm not going to get into that now because many people would say, how? Oh. They never ask him for no documentation to say, oh, give, send your this, send your proof, uh-uh. And he started university. He That boy is in Mississippi State University, which I'm a proud mother. So listen, people, do your thing. Don't listen to anybody. Focus. Yes. You know your dreams. Yes. You know what you want to accomplish. I always encourage people. This is a big, you, you know, you hear the name? United States of America, big place. You can succeed. Do your best. If you need encouragement, whatever you need, guys, just call me. I'm here to support it. I am big on supporting my Jamaican people. Big on that. God bless you. Stay focused. Pray a lot and you will succeed. All right, guys, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Thanks for watching. If you have not subscribed to this channel as yet, you need to go and hit that subscription 
um, button and turn your notification bells on guys you don't want to miss out on all the important information that is shared on this platform share this link with a friend share this channel with a friend tell somebody that wants to share it with somebody else and let's grow this channel because i'm sure a lot of you have been learning a lot from it so why not subscribe give me some encouragement that's encouragement sweet and labor encourage me so that i can come and give you some more encouragement thanks for watching guys i will see you next time and says my son is going to a community college i was to move into winthrop university for the new school year okay i was to move him okay all right bye guys we'll see you next time look out for more lives coming soon we're gonna have a live on friday with a young lady who's going to be sharing with us how to get a job in the uk not just a teaching job specifically uh care health care workers health care jobs in the united kingdom and other countries see you next time guys and have yourself a wonderful evening bye